What is up, guys? Welcome back to another Odd Popcorn for that review. My name's Chris. I'm Nick. Uh, today we are going to talk about an interesting little film called Fallen Angels from 1995. Um, it was uh, directed by Wong Kar Wai, and it is it is well renowned as a as a cult classic. Uh, it is part of a I don't know. I, I don't want to misspeak. It, there's at least one movie that this is the sequel to, or at least the spiritual successor to, which is Chunking Express, and that did come first. Um, but let's let's just get into it. What did what did you think about this movie? You know, going into it, it was kind of the opposite of The Little Mermaid, uh, which we previously talked about, where I thought I was gonna like this movie a lot, and I came out of it couldn't not care less about it it was there were some certain cool elements like the cinematography and a lot of the shots was really cool it cinematography is dope for sure yeah yeah but the story for me i maybe i don't know i was a little bit lost at some points like i got the big overarching plot of what it was but uh it was definitely strange and not what i was expecting to get out of this movie at all it's frantic you know yeah. what i mean at points it's like really Seem, seems to be purposefully, uh, I don't know about hard to follow, but just like literally following what's going on on the screen is is difficult at times. I mean, yeah. I do like the cinematography a lot. Like everything shot on this super wide angle lens. So everything, you know, I don't even know how to, if you don't know what a wide angle lens looks like, I mean, it's, it's hard to explain. It makes, you know, it's making like people close up to the camera really take up a huge amount of the screen and, and, uh, mm -hmm. and far away it really stretches out the... And kind it, of warps and stretches out everything around them, and, well, like you and said, it makes for a cool atmosphere. Like hard following the shots because they did have like a bunch of jumpy shots, like of I'm walking down this way down the hallway. Now I'm walking down this way down the hallway, and this way and this yeah, way. And it's like okay, handheld he's camera. Down the hallway. Yeah, handheld camera being held by a guy who's like being attacked by spider monkeys or something. Like just cr you know crazy uh, camera movement and and just really uh and and it's not just it's not just the wide angle lens like they do a bunch of experimenting with shots and like sometimes it'll be in black and white sometimes it'll mm -hmm. be very distorted and blurry and sketchy and or like you'll focus on a shot of a person's face that's very distorted by like being reflected in a mirror or a piece of metal or yeah they do and then and then that like that stutter step thing where they would just show you like every fifth frame oh sometimes. yeah i see you know i know what, what i mean you're talking about. I, that i didn't really like that much but most of the cinematography was at least interest, visually interesting, and everything is shot at night. Mm -hmm. Not a moment of daylight in this movie. It's like the world is, only exists at night, and which makes sense because it's supposed to be like you know the the seedy underworld. I guess we should talk about the plot a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. It's basically a hitman and his partner who is this woman that he she kind of scopes out the situations beforehand and gives him a little blueprint of what to go, to do where the people are going to be at that he needs to kill. And there's kind of a B story, which I didn't know going into it. I guess I didn't read the synopsis well enough about an entrepreneur who is just kind of this weird, really crazy guy who uh, becomes mute as a child because he eats a bad can of pineapples. But he's like running these people's businesses when they're closed at night, like from like 12 p.m. or 12 a.m. Yeah, to like 5 a.m. It's kind of a morning. con almost yeah. or like a, you know, yeah. But he's being very, very aggressive in his sales tactics. Like, I mean, to the point of, you know, basically forcing people to get, sh like, shave their face or get haircuts or... Yeah, they're basically or, like, here, forcing take, his stuff take the people. money and just leave me alone. Yeah, I mean, he couldn't be more obnoxious, and he, and he's mute on top of that, so it's it's really, um, for me, it was difficult to watch that guy. Mm -hmm. and I, I mean, didn't... he is just so obnoxious. And like I said, going into the movie, I thought that it was going to be based mainly around the hitman and his partner. And that part of the movie with the entrepreneur guy, I feel like, took up two-thirds of the movie. Well, and, and by the way, we should say, he is also like, and they don't, I don't really, it didn't feel like they spent a lot of time giving you detail about this. And maybe they give mm -hmm. you none. This movie does make the viewer do a lot of the work. But, uh... But he's like a he's like an ex convict who's escaped prison and he's on the run. So this is how he's living his life is like maybe he's sleeping during the day hiding and then like at night he's because uh, he lives with his dad. But it, at night his way of hiding is to like go go to these businesses and and be, force their wares on on unsuspecting people. But mm -hmm. uh, and there's like a whole scene that's kind of made to have a lot of weight. And I don't know if I was just lost in 
how confused I was about the movie I'm watching in that moment, but I kind of got confused to death about there's a scene with ice cream and forcing a guy to eat ice cream and his whole like family comes down and it's it's a guy that the entrepreneur has run into before he's like forcefully washing his hair and go that's the guy he tries to shave the guy's like here just take the money leave me alone that's kind of every time somebody gives him money he's like oh okay go ahead leave but then yeah yeah, he starts force feeding that guy ice cream and like pulls him into the ice cream truck and that guy like calls his family and he's like hey sorry um i'm gonna be late i have to eat some ice cream and they're like, what are you talking about? And then his whole family comes down there, and then, then they're all just eating ice cream in the ice cream truck. I, but not to get too lost in the in yeah. the details of it. I mean, the the you know, you 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 started to say like kind of the overarching plot is this this um, assassin and his and his partner, and it it does lo- like there's two plots that there's two a a and b plots that only intersect at the end. So mm-hmm. you know there is. Um, there, there, there are two stories going on here, but I just don't think. I did. I expected. I, I, I almost wish they had spent more time on one story and just fleshed out one whole story instead of. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's just it's so art house and so. Trying to be. I mean, I don't want to say like it's not. I don't want to say pretentious. Like this movie has a lot of fans and people love this movie, so I don't know if it, pretentious is the word, but it's just it's so. If there's so much style. I do think some of the substance gets lost in the style. I mean, I can't help but think that leaving this movie is that there was a, it was a lot more emphasis on cool shots and interesting scenes and interesting framing up the camera a certain way and everything. And yeah, I mean, it, there was sure a ton of people disagree. I'm sure, yeah, but I f- I feel like there wasn't even that much dialogue in the movie. Mm-mm. I mean, there there was a one deep, character but, mute. Really. Yeah. I mean, it had has like the voice in his head describing things of what happened and everything. But even like when, I don't know, it just seemed like for the dialogue there was, it wasn't that great, and there wasn't that much of it. And also, I mean, the only, you know, I know that they're trying to instill this feeling of longing. Everyone has this feeling of longing. They want more out of life than they're getting, or they things, you know. There's there's sort of this always need for more satisfaction because there's this the the. She doesn't get a name, I don't think ever. But the the assistant or the partner of of our main hitman is in love with him. But it's not, you know, it's unrequited. Um, so I guess I guess all you can see is her longing and her wanting to be with him. But you don't get in. <laughs> there's just no chem, there's no chemistry there. They don't see. I mean, if, if there's a point made at the very beginning of the movie that they have barely seen each other at all in the 155 weeks that they've been partners almost three years and they've barely seen each other, but she's just become obsessed with them and in love with them. And, and he couldn't want anything less. Like he doesn't, he thinks that would ruin their partnership that he's happy with how it works. Like he likes being lazy, having to do no planning at all. He just wants to be told to what to do, do where to go. That's why yeah, he likes he being to, a hitman. Everything's planned out like, for him. You just tell him, and he seems to have, he's so apathetic. He just has no regard for any of the con. He doesn't care who's, getting killed next he doesn't care what kind of bloody mess he leaves behind he doesn't care nothing you know mm-hmm. and uh so and i guess he does know that she's in love with him right i mean i i think so because i mean the whole thing whenever he does decide to split ways he tells her to go to this bar which i'm pretty sure he knows it's like his local bar that she's already going to when he's not there and like sitting in his chair and she's oh, like, and he suggests the song yeah a song which is like stop basically a song that's like don't love him anymore yeah it's like get over him or move on from him or something and then there's something about 1818 is his number and that's the the track that the song is on so she knows to play that okay yeah so that's her and that that's what finally breaks her heart and she realizes like it's hopeless and and she but then when when he does finally like call it all because they have like i think they show like one successful kill of them that actually goes well and doesn't you know, it just goes pretty smoothly. Mm-hmm. But then there's another kill where things don't go well, and, and it's complicated to explain why. And I'm not sure I'm capable of explaining how that went down. But all that to say, he gets he gets injured in this, and he's finally like, okay, now I'm, I am done. And he and he meets with her and uh and says he wants to end their partnership, and she wants to do one last kill. Am I right about this? Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, she wants to do one last kill. I I don't know, uh, but it ends up. Well, and th- there's a whole there's a whole B storyline too within within the relationship between the yeah. hitman and his assistant about this 
other character, Blondie. Yeah, because is... I think he has that first successful kill. Not first, but the first successful kill that we see. He goes mm-hmm. to McDonald's afterwards to get some food. <laughs> Very nostalgic looking. Like, it looks yeah. like... A... It, lo- it looks just like McDonald's looked in 1995 in Tennessee. <laughs> right. And it's, <laughs> but it's, in, it's in Hong Kong. Yeah, and it's it's just the hitman and this other blonde lady that's in there. And then she comes and sits by him and starts chatting him up. And by the way, like, the only acting I liked in the movie was the hitman and uh, yeah. the, the partner. Like, Blondie, Charlie. Blondie's terrible. Insufferable. Yeah, just over the top. Like, her. I mean, her voice is nails on a chalkboard. I mean, everything yeah. about her on the screen was horrible. But, and, and... yeah. So they they kind of have, like, a little weird love relationship, but she's a prostitute. And, and at I the guess, same time, she seems it. more interested in being, like, being in a relationship with him. He, mm-hmm. he, again, he's kind of like, I don't, I just want, you know, this to be casual or whatever. And she's the prostitute in this situation, so it's kind of crazy. But, uh, but she seems to be, like, delusionally thinking that he is an ex-boyfriend of hers or maybe he is it's hard to say they don't give you a lot to go on they don't give you anything yeah but yeah the blondie the blondie thing i mean i think the the maybe the only point of that was to show that he's like really doesn't care about his partner because he could be sleeping with her if he wanted to well and maybe there's you know maybe it serves the point of showing you that aspect of his personality that's so apathetic that like when he does break blondie's heart it's pretty much with no care in the world and he's just like because she has that scene where it, it's like pouring rain and she like she's like give me your arm and she bites him on the arm and she's like you might remember forget my face but you'll never forget my bite yeah now and uh and he says something about how like yo i'll just be a stop along your life's journey and i hope i hope that journey lands good but mm-hmm. you know lands in the right spot but i'm not part of that journey and see you later so he doesn't so, care about that at all. So he does seem to ha- like he has some level of care about his partner, but it's not going to be a romantic, yeah, I guess so. relationship. And then when she's all heartbroken and everything at the and we've missed there's things in there, but I don't know how much. Well, we should probably jump back to the entrepreneur side of the story. So like after it oh, does right, all the right, weird right. stuff with him running these businesses at nighttime, uh, he meets a girl when he's trying to scam at this one place. He's like trying to give these people these flyers, and this girl's like on the phone talking to this guy. She's like, oh, you want to get married? I'll marry you. Ha, 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 ha. And then like, mm-hmm. she's having this whole conversation with this guy over the phone. And uh, she's like, oh, you're, you're getting married to Blondie? Oh, yeah, congratulations. What's what's her number so I can give her a call? Mm-hmm. And then... <laughs> and she, she's super nice to him. Yeah. On the phone. And then and she then... hangs up with the guy she's talking to and turns to the entrepreneur and is like, give me 10 cents. I need to call her right now. And, like, mm-hmm. calls, leaves a message, like, I know you're there. I know you're not answering because it's me, you piece of shit. That's my boyfriend, blah, blah, blah. And, like, calls yeah, again. Yeah, she leans time into her. Going crazy. And I don't know. I guess Blondie is just a common name. They kind of make a point of that later because it's not. It's definitely it, not the Blondie where that, uh, the hitman's with. Yeah, well, because she wouldn't be getting married to it. Yeah. 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 So yeah, I guess anybody that dyes their hair blonde. <laughs> basically, that happens with the entrepreneur, and uh, her name's Charlie, and then they start having a, I guess, kind of a like he helps her try to find Blondie, and then he thinks they're having a romantic it's relationship. He, it's definitely one sided. He's, he's yeah. falling in love with her, and uh, and when he, the moment he realizes he's in love with her, they spend forever in the scene in like a diner. Yes. With her just barely moving at all in the same, you know, the same just lackadaisical. The shot uh, had to go on, on for at least like 30, 45 seconds. And it's all black and white and dreamy and whatever. And it's supposed to just show how obsessed with her he, with he, you know, he is now and, but, in, and how not into it she is. But you don't have to do it. I mean, they just linger on that for so, so, so long. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing really happening here. So. Yeah. And she's not a like. I don't think I don't find her likable either. The phone call oh, no. is uh, is extremely grating. And well, she she was like Blondie, where she was just like completely over the top and annoying, S- screeching everything. Mm-hmm. And then you know they have that little, they I guess they go to a soccer match and they're supposed to go to another one and she doesn't show up, and that's when he realizes, oh, my heart's been broken mm-hmm. by by this girl, and then he kind of cleans up his act a little bit. And quits opening these businesses and gets a, his own little job. And he doesn't he have a run in with the hitman? Yeah, so he he gets a job at like a 
uh, not, I guess, just like a little, I mean, it's, I know it's Chinese, but the only word I can think of is yakitori type place, where they're just like grilling mm-hmm. the meat right there for you and getting, getting beer and stuff, and they don't really have a conversation. The hitman is like having a conversation with the owner about like, hey, how much does it cost to open up one of these? Yeah, what would it be like to start a business like this? Kind yeah, of basically, you know, him thinking about opening up his own business instead of being a hitman. And that's really, I, I don't so know why that scene was even then, in there, but I mean, that interaction had I mean, nothing I guess to it's to show plot. us that he's like getting his, like the, the mute dude is like sort of straightening up his life or whatever, but it doesn't last long because once mm-hmm. it's like not long. So at some point his father dies and I lost where that really happens in the movie or how that's even information is really even given to us. But there's a, there's a point where like he, I think the business owner at the restaurant gives him a video camera, right? Yeah, I don't or know if he give... gives it to him or if he stole it from him because I think yeah, he goes I mean, a little he, wild he, again. he wouldn't be beyond beyond stealing yeah. from him, but but he gets the video camera and he's just obsessively filming everything. And it's again, it's super aggressive in people's faces. Unwant people are screaming at him to get away from him, and he's just all up in everybody's business, filming everything, covertly filming people. Whether I mean, but he's filmed a lot. He's filmed his dad a lot, and they have this weird relationship. But he, but whatever. But he's filmed him a lot, and so after he's dead, he's just obsessed with like watching on repeat these videos of his father and he so he, you get the idea that he's things aren't going well for him and then when we see the uh, charlie character again she's like at some business that he's pretending to be the owner of or something yeah he goes back and, to doing that and uh and she's dressed as like a stewardess and he tries to remind her who he is or get her to acknowledge him or whatever and she just she doesn't even visually acknowledge him at a point like she just turns around and isn't acknowledging anything he's doing and he's putting on this whole goofy show uh acting like he's getting shot and pouring sauce on himself to make it look like he's got blood stains on his apron it's a really awkward scene and she just completely ignores him and some other guy takes her off and, she, and he's like who's this what's this guy doing and she's like i don't know what he's doing it's crazy <laughs> yeah and that's and, uh, that's basically both sides of the story until like the end, I think, right? I think so. Until I mean, the that's all you really because, like you said, the the hitman and the partner. I guess I I don't remember that her wanting to do another job, but I know he did do another job, and I was like, why why is he doing this if he's trying to get out? And then that one goes completely. There's probably wrong. there's probably something I'm leaving out of that last story. I was I was having a hard time with this movie. Yeah, it was hard to really like commit. I'm just thinking about so many aspects of it as I'm watching it. Like, it probably deserves a rewatch down the road, but I can't go. I can't go right into watching that movie no. again because I just didn't have a good time with it, and I don't. I don't feel compelled to give it another shot right now. Okay. It, 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 in the future, I'm sure you know. But uh, anyway, but the, yeah. So you want to go go into the, go into what happens at the end? <laughs> yeah. So basically, it's like the. The penultimate scene, I believe, is like he is on this last hit. He's in the bathroom, kind of like, all right, let's get out and do this. Goes out, both guns in his hands, starts shooting at these people. Like every one of them turns around and starts shooting back at him this time. And he starts mm-hmm. running off, and then ultimately they like, shoot him down in the like restaurant part of the place that they're in. And he mm-hmm. dies, right? Yeah, it's over. And he kind of he has this line, which I can't remember what it is. I think it's about kind of the whole thing about like I like having things being planned out for me because i'm so lazy because it like repeats that line in that scenario and yep. then yeah from there it jumps to that that final scene that you were talking about yeah i mean the so the very final scene is we, we're, we're we're just focused on um the assistant the fem- female hitman's assistant mm-hmm. uh and i don't know that she knows that he's dead or if she just has she just at least knows that their relationship's never going to materialize into anything. Maybe it could have been like a setup. Like I, they don't give you the information, so I guess you got to interpret it for yourself. But maybe her last job, she was was a setup. Because I mean, every single one of those guys shot back at him. Like, but if that yeah. were the case, uh, maybe not. Because if that were the case, maybe they would have shot at him before he started shooting. But anyways, I mean, they, something gets found out. Like he gets compromised in some kind of way for sure. There. But... Yeah. I don't know if like a, I don't know. There's something we're missing there, unfortunately. But uh, it doesn't. It doesn't ultimately. To me, it doesn't matter that much because mm-hmm. of how I felt about the movie. But uh, <laughs> but so at the you know at the end, uh, it just so happens that, and it's not the first time they've encountered each other. But I I didn't mention it earlier. But but it just so happens that the, um, the our mute the mute character Ho Chi Mo, and 
the hitman's assistant are in the same cafe and it just focuses on her face for a long time looking extremely sad and eating these noodles with like a cig cigarette that's like all ash like three inches of ash hanging off of it and eating noodles and smoking cigarettes like at the same time she's just eating <laughs> eating noodles with cigarette ashes in her i mean it's crazy well that's something we she just didn't mention is like there's probably not a moment in this movie where somebody doesn't have a cigarette in their hand oh people are there's nothing that people won't do with this they're eating with cigarettes and drinking with cigarettes and they're sleeping with each other with cigarettes and they're there's no moment and it, half the time they don't even look they look like they it's have just... been burned but they're not even lit anymore <laughs> yeah it's like a three inches of ash on every nobody ashes their cigarettes in hong kong at this time period People, people just look, you know, and I know this is intentional and it's not really, but people just, everybody looks so sad yeah, all the time. Like everybody just looks like things are not going well. And it is showing you like the underbelly of, you know, you're, 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 you're looking at people that are struggling here, but even the people, you know, I'm sure that financially speaking, the hitman and, and his assistant aren't struggling financially. They're just struggling with what they do for a lit or, you know, whatever they but she's in that cafe, and so, and I didn't realize this until looking at the movie later. But, uh, but Ho Chi, uh, Ho Chi Mo is in the same cafe, and he gets he absolutely gets beaten down by like a, I guess like a gang. Mm -hmm. It's a bunch of a bunch of people. And they're breaking bottles. I mean, they really hurt hurt him. And in that moment, I think they just sort of like it's supposed to be like in that moment they both realize how similar their situations are. They've been, like, rejected by the people they love. But they don't know each other at all, is the weird thing. Didn't they too. run into each other before, at least Well, at if least they once. did, I don't remember them having a conversation, but maybe. Somehow they they, they find this, like, similarity this with each bond. other's situation. They're both in this at their, at their rock bottom, and uh, he offers her a ride home on his motorcycle. And there's been a bunch of times throughout the movie that they've gone through the same uh, tunnel yeah and uh on, on his motorcycle and it and they always like kind of stylize it where it's sped up really fast but they they go through this tunnel together and that's like the iconic shot from the poster of her with this her head on his shoulder and, and smoking, yeah. the, smoking the cigarette on the motorcycle but uh no helmets you know <laughs> <laughs> but uh but like there's no it's not really played like they're gonna go off into the sunset and have a happy relationship together no. or anything like that. It's like he's not in love with her. She's not in love with him. She just is realizing in that moment she just wanted the warmth of another person near her. And he's doing the trick in this moment. And, you know, so for this for right now, he's he's enough. And and it and I and it almost sounds like a little poetic in a way, but I didn't leave the movie feeling much except like irritated with how that just went <laughs> yeah i mean i should have felt something at the end of that you know yeah I, I was just kind of relieved it was over i wasn't having a good time watching it. like the, like like i said the best part of the movie was the cinematography but other than that like i thought the story was really muddled and i couldn't follow it very well and i didn't understand so how many these grating, two... irritating characters yeah that and i don't under i didn't understand how these two stories went together at all like why did these people's lives intersect or how for in the, in the brief moments that they did meet why would they become ultimately this bigger thing which i guess the it characters wasn't. that the characters that you liked the most and i guess i agree but the character mm -hmm. we liked the most were not it wasn't like we loved those characters it's just like in a sea of not a sea of but like in a cast you know small cast but mm -hmm. in a cast of all these characters that are so irritating they just weren't irritating particularly but it's like i don't know it just it's disappointing <laughs> so, I, I, yeah it, like i said it was like the opposite of little mermaid we both went into this thinking like hey this is gonna be a great movie and we both left like what I, why i wasn't very i guess that, that's what I, this in, is what you, you know when you go into something like this where we're gonna watch a bunch of movies we are going into knowing not uh, not a lot and yeah, a lot of these yeah. are like well-renowned movies that's There's the thing it's a well-renowned movie there's gonna be times where they, for us, they're not. Yeah. You know, and it's unfortunate, but uh, I, I, I don't want to be the guy that just decides to like something because you're supposed and to. So I'm, I'm really kind of surprised that you didn't like this movie because I, I, so far we've agreed on most of the movies we've seen, and mm -hmm. I definitely expected you to like this movie, and I was gonna come in and be like, yeah, this movie was dog shit. Not for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, that's what it is. You know, anytime we watch a movie, and and everybody says this, but like anytime we watch a movie and we don't like it, it's not. We can't tell you what's bad or not. Yeah, you're you know, not this like is it. just this is just how we feel about it. So many people disagree with us. You know, I bet you don't run into many people that agree with what we're saying here. Mm-hmm. So you should probably watch it. You know, it's it's fam- it's famous. It's a famous movie for a reason, and you should probably watch it. But it's not me recommending yeah. the movie because I liked it so much. Mm-hmm. So I don't even I don't even know how to rate this movie. Man, I'd probably give it like a three and a half. Three and a half kernels out of ten. I'm trying to decide how many more points to give it for the originality and like the visual aspect and the cinematography and all that being so cool. But how much can that really pull a movie up that I didn't? That is what like I get. That, that was my score. That was because I did not like the story. It. I, I would it was just it the a, cinematography that I liked about the movie, and that was about it. Yeah, I'd give it like a three and a half out of ten. Unfortunately, spot on. Well, they won't all be like that, you know. Yeah. Well, all right. Well, that I think that's I think that's it for us. Yeah, I think Unless we're. You got else you want to add to that? No, I think that's about it. I think we're undecided on our next movie, so it's going to be a surprise for mystery, next mystery Monday. Movie. But yeah, it'll be one that's on our Monday. list. Uh, but yeah, if yeah. you like the video, uh, you know, give us a like, subscribe, share, whatever you guys hit the button, the notification, and I'll see you next time. Yeah, see you guys.